This whole coronavirus thing is really, really messing up our schedule today. You see, all of P&G is closing down their airspace for the next two weeks starting tomorrow, so we have to get all of our people out of our bush that are critical that need to come out. So we'll see how the day goes. I'm scheduled to do like six or seven landings, but we might be flying all three planes down to Port Moresby if some of our missionaries are not able to actually get out of the country. To Singapore, we're gonna go pick them all up today and bring them back up here to Garoka if they can't get out. So we'll see how the day plays out. Let's get started. And we're taking the Zulu departure time zero six, tracking zero eight six on, on one seven thousand. Everything is back. Fuel is on. Charger on low. Over fourteen percent. Introduce our fuel. Uh, contact uh, Mosby on VH one two three. Decimal. Our NG for hot starts. Our NP. Our correction. Our ITT for hot starts. Eight eight six four hundred five five six five. Remember. Five seventy six. Don't release the cart. So, this is an interesting day today. My whole schedule has changed because PG is closing the airspace tomorrow, and we needed to get a couple of our missionaries out of the bush. So, this is the first time we've had every one of our aircraft actually do a dawn departure. It is six oh eight now, almost six oh nine. My first leg, I'm going to pick up some guys. We sent them an in-reach message, but I'm not actually sure if they got it. So I might be showing up and they're probably gonna be going, well, what are you doing here at 6.30 in the morning? Hopefully they're awake. We'll get those all in a second. Put our V2 tracker on. That's how they can track our airplanes here at our home base. All right, we got 1,050 on the fuel, and I don't have any cargo today. I'm gonna have to manually put it in, I don't think I have a flight plan for this where I'm going. All right, fuel caps are done, selectors already checked, controls. System and TAWS, we're good to go for there. Switches and instruments. I'm gonna go over here and check our fuel, or I mean our weight. 5,700 pounds, come down here, take off 56, 65. So 65 is if we need to come back in at all. 56 is our rotate speed for this weight. Those are done. All of our T's and P's are in the green. And our trims are set up. Flaps are set at 20 and verified. Call up tower. Groka tower, good morning. November Tango Echo request taxi. Yambai talk, one POV. English at taxi to one seven left. Q&H 1017. And November Tango Echo behind uh, the departing uh, traffic taxi 417 left, enter back track and line up. Enter back track and line up. 17 left, November Tango Echo. I'm requesting uh, local QNH again, please. QNH 1017. 1017, thanks. All right, Governor, speed check. Thousand sixty and it has a rise over 2100. Ignition on, strobes on, now that we're on the runway. Up here. All right, if we do need to abort for any reason, full reverse, heavy braking, if we're going off, cut off, pull off, and shut off. Departed 1-1 on climb, not above 1000. After takeoff, pick for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. Neither of those two work. We're gonna go straight ahead, cut off, pull off, and shut off 80 full flaps, 85, 20 degrees of flaps. Get our emergency call tower, let them know what's happening. Contact Mosby, correction, contact Medang on VHF 120.1, or HF 65908.38, independent gap. All right, ignition, lights, uh, and inlet are finished. Eight degrees, so our takeoff torque is going to be 1390, 1440 as we increase our speed, more air is coming in the intake. 
and it will rise our torque about 50 pounds. November Tango Echo Ring takeoff. November Tango Echo 17 left, make a right turn, straight for takeoff. Left takeoff, right turn, November Tango Echo. Right. Ignition is on, condition, flaps 20. Pool is on, harnesses are locked. Rotate at 56. Looks like a nice morning out. 1390. Alright, airspeed is alive. There's our rotate. As we're rotating, we're just putting a tiny bit of extra right rudder pressure in, just to counteract those P factors. Kilo Hotel Company. After we passed our 400 feet, AGL over 90 degree or over 90, correction 85. We're going to go ahead and reduce our flaps a little bit. Once we're over 90 and it's still increasing, we're going to go ahead and reduce the last degree of flap up to zero. For our best climb, our VY, which is going to be 99 knots. Maybe try going up to like 21. All right. We departed time at 14. 33 minutes to Yumbai Talk. Truck Tower November Tango Echo departed time 14, tracking to 302 on climb not above 1 2000. Yumbai Talk 57. November Tango Echo, not above 1 2000. Contact uh, Medang on VH120.1 or HF 6598 at 15 miles. 15 miles, contact Medang, 120.1 or 6598. saying that there is a lot of clouds there that are just kind of rolling through at this at 622 it's 640 now they just said I'm not gonna be able to land but I'm still gonna go out there and try and just see sometimes the maybe bug is gonna be rolling in and out let me get this manual skill which is super annoying when it's going in and out if I can't land there I'm just gonna go ahead and go on to my next destination pick up my next missionary head back to WeWAC where I can get fuel and then head back out there to get Vertical them track. at a later time. So that's Betty letting us know that we need to head on down. So we already have our altitude selected here. We're gonna go ahead and hit vertical speed here and turn it down to, I usually start with around six, usually about 200 feet under my, uh, my desired vertical speed. And as you can see, it's just gonna right pass, right past it. So we're gonna go, once it goes past it, then we're gonna go ahead but in, that way it's not going down to like a thousand feet per minute and then kind of ballooning back and forth until we get to it. This way you can kind of just get to it and then slowly arrive at your vertical speed that you want to. And I, I think that's more just the autopilot. It's the S-Tech autopilot. I wish we had the Garmin one. I hear that it's pretty awesome. This one is more mediocre. All right, as we are increasing our speed, we're gonna have to take out a little bit of that right rudder trim, either that or just put in a little left, whichever way you want to think of it. Now let's go ahead and start our checklist. Selectors and brakes are good. Our taws, we're going to be coming into a bush location, so we're going to turn off Bitchy Betty, because we don't like her yelling at us, letting know to, to pull up, or there's train ahead, things like that. So, 
we have our taws off, we don't use our yaws, our yard, our yaw dampener in this airplane. We're still 37 miles out, so we're gonna leave our landing light, pulse light, and our inertial separator where it is right now. Just looking ahead, it looks like it's possibly, I don't know, scattered to broken clouds up there. So as we get closer, we'll just determine what we're gonna be able to do. So our VREF is our approach speed, and in this airplane specifically, it changes dependent on weight. So today, let's come over here to our aux page. And it says that we're gonna be at, we're at 5,540 pounds at this moment right now. And we've got about, I don't know, 10 minutes left to go. So we're gonna just take off maybe a little bit less than 100 pounds. So our landing speed is gonna be 63 knots. So at that, we're gonna come back over here, hit our time reference, come down to our VREF and put in 63 knots. Now that's gonna be the slowest that we can come in on this approach safely. But for different bush and mountain strips, you're gonna to wanna to come in as slow as you possibly can. Just up on the ground that much easier. All right, so we have set up our VREF now. That's complete. Our abort, merge, abort procedures, we're just gonna go ahead and go over those once we get a lot closer, so that's fresh my mind. Ups and harnesses, we don't really need to do anything with that quite yet, so we're caught up on our checklist. All right, I'm just gonna quickly show you our strip chart and what it actually looks like. It says it's closed, that was an older strip chart. It hasn't been updated, saying that it is open now, they've cut the grass and whatnot. Elevation is 510 feet. Our runway landing is gonna be runway two zero. So we'll set that up in our OBS shortly once we get a little bit closer. Our length is 527 meters, which is about 1500 feet long. And slope is 0 0.07, which means it's pretty much flat. Uh, I've been here enough times um, and it's not really slippery here. So that's good. It's 26 meters wide, so about 75 feet wide. As we come in, you'll see there's like kind of a, it's not necessarily just a straight down cliff, but it pretty much just drops off at the end of the runway. All right, so we're now we're kind of at the top of this scuzzy layer. Uh, we're at 7,000, so we still have another 6,000 feet to go down. We've got 20 miles to go. Now, as we're coming in here, this is a, a pretty wide valley with a river going down it. And so if we can get below this, more than likely, we're gonna be able to maneuver down the valley VFR until we get to our destination. For some reason we can't, then we'll stay up high and then go over top and then try to work our way down. But because there's so much kind of underlining clouds, it is probably going to require me to try to get down here VFR. Looks like the valley is open, which is a great thing because I really don't want to have to try to go over top of it and then work my way down. So more than likely with all valleys here in Papua New Guinea, I don't know if it's everywhere in the world, but valleys in general are usually open. Like they have clouds all built up on the mountains and valleys are usually really, really nice. So as you can see, it, it is actually looking really good. It looks like there's just a low layer of cloud. There's a river that goes down so usually where there's rivers, there's a little bit more clouds. So they're kind of right on a bend too. And as we get closer, you'll see it's kind of like a Venturi effect. Where it's a really wide valley here and they're kind of at the, at the focal point of the valley and then it opens back up again. So all the wind channels right through there. And usually after around 11 a.m. in the morning, we can't land there because the winds will shift around and start coming behind us and then we'll have like a 12 or 13 knot tailwind. And when you're only talking 1,500 feet on the runway, and it just doesn't give you a lot of margin if you were to try to land with a 12 or 13 knot tailwind. Right now that we're arriving, let's go ahead and flip our landing light, our pulse lights on. We'll wait till we slow down a little bit below 140 knots before we will put our inertial separator into a bypass. Let's kind of come up here and take a look at what else we can talk about our abort procedures. This is kind of a late final as we come in. All right, so we're landing on runway 21. You can see here it, this is the go around. Our final, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, left hand turn out. 
All right, six miles out, we're gonna go ahead and put our props in. It does look like there's quite a bit of low-lining clouds right where I actually need to be. Put our prop all the way full forward, we're bringing this fork back down to around 400. It's gonna slow us down. All right, so just looking at where I need to actually be, there's only a cloud right here, kind of in the valley where we are. Let's go over top of it because it's open on just the other side. We might be able to do a revised pattern. Revised pattern to be able to get in here. So our approach speed is 63, so we want 73 on base, 83 on downwind. We're below 140 knots, so let's put our inertial separator bypass. We've got 10 degrees. So lights and inlet are complete. We've talked about our abort. Ops and harnesses are done. For search and rescue, let's give them a quick call. Alright, so we just let him know that we are in the circuit. If I was for sure going to land, I'd probably just cancel with him, but because I'm not 100% sure, I'm just letting him know that we are out here in case he's wondering, hey, you were supposed to call me at this specific time and you haven't yet. So, it does look like there's just a lot of clouds. If we can't land here, we're just going to go ahead and head on to our next destination and at least pick up our next guy so we can get the day going because I might have to go down to Port Moresby this afternoon to pick up people depending on if people can get out or not. So, let's do our OBS at runway 21. That's going to give us a quick line because I can't see it right now and I'm just about over top of it. It does look like there's a lot of low lining clouds right, right in my pattern. So, that off, flip that back up. Yeah, I can see the runway, but I can't actually get to it. It's just clouds all on my approach, which really sucks because I can see this end of the runway. It's completely clear, but I actually can't get in there at all. Doesn't look like I can get in there from the other side either. So let's just, looks like there's just too much clouds down underneath here to get in there comfortably or safely. That really stinks. Okay, well, on to the next place, I guess. Under that 10 degrees of flaps. Bring our props back down to 2,000 RPM. 720 on the ITT. And off to the next place which is another 26 minutes, I believe, from here. Hopefully we can get in there, otherwise that will really screw up my day. So we're two five miles out, and it's complete overcast fog down below us. So we'll see if it actually is going to work for this place as well. So let me go ahead and bring up the strip chart for you. Elevation is 110 feet, so it's nice and buggy. It's 560 meters. It's super flat, super boggy if you get off the center line at all. I was in there last week, last Thursday or Friday, I think, and it was nice and firm as far as the middle goes, but the second you get off, maybe the like five feet to the right of center line, it just felt like you just like dead stop. It was super, super soft. So, not sure exactly what the winds are going to do there, but probably early this, early in the morning, there isn't going to be any winds. So I'm planning on landing on runway five over here. So I'll come around here, the hill right here, and uh, went for zero five right over the top of the river, and the runway just goes right to the edge of the river. It's kind of a cool looking place. Like I said, runway 05, we're a bit far out just to set up our OBS, so what I'm going to do is just turn my heading bug to 05 so I can... I'll have to look it back up again. We already have our altitude at 1,100 set in. We didn't quite finish this on our last landing, so let's start all fresh with those. So our selectors are on, our brakes are on, our TAWS as we come in, our train awareness system. 
we will turn it off so Betty doesn't yell at us. That's seven miles out. Let's just go ahead and turn it off now. And you can see it just dipped on right there. Our lights in our inlet, we're at one seven miles out. We can just put our landing lights on and our pulse light is on. We'll do our inertial separator shortly as we get down below 140 knots. Our port on this one is just going to be a straight ahead. Uh, it's, it's flat jungle out there, so pretty much our committal will just be short, short final over the, pretty much over the numbers because we can go straight ahead. No issues if we do need to, it's going to be power up. Uh, basically needles to the top of the green, so just power up 20 degrees, pitch back for 73, which is going to be our VX, our best climb. Our best angle of climb, can you get out of there as quickly as possible, and then reset our torque up to 740 on our ITT just to get our max performance to, to get up at a reasonable altitude, and then once we do, then we'll start bringing it back. So we're five miles out, I'm going to go ahead and push my prop all the way forward. Bring our torque down to around 400 foot-pounds. That's going to slow us down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fly the whole pattern. I'm going to run over top of the runway so I can take a look at it. That way people down below can hear me coming. They can get off the runway. They can get the chickens, the dogs, or whatever else is on the runway off the runway. And then I'll just do a full circuit all the way around. All stations now do November. Tango Echoes on the circuit. Now do. All right. There is our close coming up to 1,100 feet for our pattern. So, if our VREF or our approach speed is 62 on base, I want 72. On downwind, I want 82. Now, 62 is a really hard number to actually get to in this airplane. It's the slower it is, it's it's so much harder. You have such a high nose attitude. Okay, so here's the Nadu right here, and it looks good. There's a couple clouds on final. If we were coming in that way, let's just check our wind right now. We have five knots coming from that way, so we actually will come in on runway two, three, instead of zero, five, which is the way I normally come in. Looks like it is wet. They might have had rain. I don't see anybody on the runway. I'm losing my altitude, not paying attention, so let's head back up to 1,100 feet. If we do need to go around, we'll go straight ahead. It's still just kind of a scuzzy, scattered layer at looks to be about 100 feet, maybe 150 feet. All right, 10 degrees of flaps. And if we did come in this way, we'd also have the sun right in our eyes. All right, there's our pattern altitude. Let's start slowing down. A mile out, we're going to go ahead and turn onto our downwind. 20 degrees as well help us slow down. Good for 82 knots. Right, as you can see here, this is our runway heading. So we know that we are parallel with the runway at this time, our 82 knots and our 1100 feet. We're now just approaching the numbers, a beam the numbers. Go ahead and pull the power, the torque back to around 400 to 440 work out really well in this airplane. We want to lose 300 feet, so we want to turn our base at 800 feet. Usually around 1.6 miles. Usually. Uh, does pretty well. Not at every place, but if there's no references like there is here, then we'll turn our base at 1.6 nautical miles. So 1.6, which is just top of the right of that little hill right there. Now we want 72 knots, turning final 600. down a bit. What, 72 knots? No flaps. Checklist complete. Alright, lined up on center line. Get coordinated. About 62 knots now. Just gonna just take a lot of high nose attitude in this airplane to get down to 62, but we'll give it a go. Some birds directly in front of us. Get out of the way. Thank you. 
Bravo is over, so I'm doing pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Oh, so it's just, uh, we've got 1 to 6, that's 1 to 7, I'll take uh, echo in Bravo 1. Looking for around 550 on our descent. Genesis Alpha approach. Benaut's headwind. Second and A little bit low, but just because of these clouds right here, only about 50 feet. Speed back down. vlog here hope you enjoyed it if you do leave that thumbs up for the algorithm to let other people know that this is an interesting video leave a comment down below if you have some suggestions on how to make these videos any better i'd love to hear your thoughts and thank you so much for taking the time to watch guys have a great day